This video is brought to you by Patreon supporter Scott. Scott continues to impress me. Now, this is not the first SIG LPVO I've ever reviewed that is still held by the Whiskey 5 1 to 5, which is actually coincidentally right here on my CZ457 Royale. Awesome combination. I primarily shoot that in speed drills inside 50 yards, but this is the first, first frontal plane LPVO I've got my hands on. And I'm excited about that because I want to see how well this works because I like second focal plane, but I like first focal plane. And I think combining FFP with an LPVO would be perfect. In fact, the new military Tango 6 T's are first focal plane and those have been getting rave reviews. I would love, love to get my hands on one of those next. Anyway, typical SIG box. There's everything you're going to need to know on the side. This is the 556762 horseshoe dot, similar to what the military is using. And right there, first focal plane, made in the Philippines. These come in at around 500 bucks. And the box so far, absolutely, if you could see all that, is representative of that. Again, a little bit of high mileage there, but not the end of the world. Flipping it open, you can see this box is set up for many different size scopes. Probably all in the Tango series, but you know, you just pop out the foam, you can move this over side to side, and you're good to go. Now, of course, he bought this used, and with that, we do not have any sort of paperwork. But the box is fantastic. And here it is. For 500 bucks, right off the bat, you get a lot of cool stuff. Throw lever included with six little fiber optic illuminators right there. And you know what? They do work well. I can say that. But not only that, comes with two night vision modes as well. Pretty sweet. Starting with the back, like we always do, we're going to feel that this is nice and tight. Good amount of resistance to turn this. This is not going to turn easily unless you really want it to. Let's get it all the way out. Screw it in a little bit tiny little bit of wiggle up and down and side to side. Not terrible, but I'd wish that that wasn't there, but c'est la vie. However, the tension on this is fantastic. I do like that. I'm a huge fan with anything with a throw lever, especially an LPVO, and this is no exception. And another nice thing about this, let's say it's 12 o'clock, turn that to about five o'clock. So it's a little bit less than 180 degrees, which is tighter than the norm for LPVOs. They're usually 180 degrees. The throw lever makes adjusting this magnification extremely fast, especially, and it feels especially nice considering this is nice and smooth with a fair amount of resistance on it. Again, this is not something that's just going to bump and, you know, change its magnification on you. It's always going to be pretty good. Also, check out the knurling on that. This is very aggressive feeling. Almost too aggressive, I would say. You could almost hurt yourself with this if you have soft skin. But talk about purchase. Wow. You don't even need the throw lever on this thing, to be brutally honest. But yet, they include it in there anyway. Top marks SIG. Very, very nice. Illumination knob, as you can see, has big, bold numbers and stops in between each power setting. And this is pretty hard to turn. Another thing that you're not going to have to worry about getting changed on you by accident. That is fantastic. Now, the one thing we're going to take note of immediately with this is the illumination bright enough at 1x. Because keep in mind, at 4x, this reticle is going to be a certain size. And every x you go lower than that, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. My biggest concern with this is, at 1x, will this be bright enough to actually see it? Elevation and windage caps have the same knurling as the magnification ring. And these are... These just feel fantastic. Like once you put purchase on this and you squeeze a little bit, this is not slipping out of your hand whatsoever. Awesome. Fit top mark SIG. Taking a look at the elevation turret, one click is a half MOA, which is perfectly fine. And you see that we have a total of, what is that? 50 MOA of adjustments per turn. I think that's more than fair enough. Oh, look at that. Again, a little hard to see, but the exact same st style of knurling is on the actual turret itself. It's a lot smaller, it's a lot finer, but it's there. Beautiful.
that leaves something to be desired. It's not terrible, but I felt a lot better. And, you know, it's safe to say I felt worse. It does click in pretty good. It just doesn't make that loud of an audible click. Let's see if the windage is any different. Not really. Not a deal breaker by any means of the imagination. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's your zero. You have two and two. So this would be plus two and minus two or right and left. You usually don't see that on even more expensive higher magnification scopes, let alone a one to four LTV for 500 bucks. So far, SIG is really winning me over with this. But enough of this. Let's get behind this and see what it actually looks like. So we're actually going to wrap it up shortly after we take a look at this. Here we are at 1x, 30 yards, and the reticle, it's not as small as I was expecting it to be at 1x. At 4x, it gets to a pretty usable size, maybe still a little bit on the smaller side of things, especially when we turn on the illumination, which that is the maximum brightness, and that's the thing that I was most concerned about. And the reason for that is, at 1x, that reticle is awfully small, which you're about to see again, and when it gets really small and the illumination isn't that bright, you kind of don't see it. Anyway, I'm not going to get too deep in this unboxing video, so we're going to leave it as is. A huge thank you to Patreon provider Scott for sending this in for review. This being my first FFP LPVO, I am genuinely excited to try it out, and I can't wait to run it through its paces. So, Scott, thank you, and thank you all very much for watching. See you again next time. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you, this wouldn't be possible.